Welcome to Thrive, How to Drive Small Business Success, a podcast from Capterra focused on providing small and mid-sized business leaders with ideas, actionable insights, and technology recommendations to help their business thrive. I'm Brian Westfall, Principal HR Analyst at Capterra, and your host for today's episode. In part one of our series on how to build an engaged workforce, today we're talking about employee learning and development. If you're worried that learning and development, or L&D for short, has fallen behind at your organization, you're certainly not alone. 49% of small business employees in a survey earlier this year told us that they haven't developed any new skills during the COVID-19 pandemic. As we enter 2022, however, with the great resignation draining businesses of important skills and knowledge, prioritizing your employee L&D program will be critical to keeping pace with the competition and retaining your best employees. To discuss how your small or mid-sized business should approach L&D in the new normal, I'm joined today by our guest, Claire Alexander, who is Group Vice President at Capterra. Thanks for joining us today, Claire. Thanks for having me. So because the series is talking about building an engaged workforce, I wanted to first ask, you know, why is learning development so important to building an engaged workforce today, do you think? For me, I think it boils down to the fact that we're all human beings and agency is something that makes us feel good. And so the more we can give opportunities for people to tap into and use their agency in the work environment, the more likely they are to be having fun at work. And uh, the more likely you are to be having fun at work, I think it means a good outcome for, for the organization and certainly for retention. Yeah, I mean, employees, they're looking for that intrinsic motivation to to stay at a certain job or a certain employer. I think learning development is so critical to that. Um, And it's just this learning and development topic that we're we're discussing today is so critical for organizations in general, right? We're, We're going through this thing that everyone's talking about with the great resignation. You're seeing this huge brain drain of of knowledge and skills from small and mid-sized businesses. Um, So it's going to be harder to find and hire skills uh, externally right now. And I think the more that organizations focus on learning and development right now, uh, the better suited they will be in the long run. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I started my career in consulting and uh, the education I got there was in many ways richer and deeper and more applicable than what I did in business school. Mm. And and I will always think about, you know, my my old alma mater as that, as an alma mater, as a, as a place that really helped shape who I am as a professional. I think the opportunity to play that role in employees' lives is a really powerful one and something that not many organizations think about, um, especially not necessarily if you're an SM. But to be in a place with high talent density or to be in a place that really, you know, celebrates and creates space to learn and to apply that learning um, is a really powerful uh, is a really powerful combination. I think can really help uh, make sure that you keep great talent and help attract really good new talent as well. Yeah. And it's so important for workers moving forward. We're always talking about this idea of the future of work. Right. Um, I think it was Dell. In 2017, they kind of famously predicted that 85% of jobs in 2030 hadn't been invented yet, which sounds crazy, but you've already seen in the past couple of years jobs that didn't exist before, jobs that are like merging together into new jobs. Um, So it's just so important these days to be able to set your workforce up to develop important skills that will benefit them now and benefit them in the future. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's really interesting, especially in a small business where people have to wear a lot of hats. You're you're learning something all the time, and um, there are things that you can learn on the job pretty easily. But sometimes you need scaffolding, right? Yeah. You you don't necessarily know what you need to learn, and um, an organization who can think proactively about how to help their employees be more effective, you know, have a bigger impact um, and actually point them in the right directions. Um, I think that generates a lot of, of uh, goodwill. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, our audience right now, they're probably like, oh, I know learning and development's important. Of course it is. It's a huge priority for us. Uh, but obviously one of those huge barriers to that when we're talking about small and mid-sized businesses is cost, Right. So when you talk about the cost of traditional options for skills development, think about things like college degrees, uh, they're, they're skyrocketing right now. Um, so in your opinion, what are some more affordable ways that SMBs can help employees develop new skills, do you think? 
Yeah, well, there's always the old fashioned book club. <laughs> Love so a good book club. You, can, you can start there. You know, there are the equivalent of amazing book clubs happening online, um, whether it's uh, through, uh, you know, Reddit and Quora are great places to learn things through peer networks, um, through uh, through blogs. There are really great blogs out there um, that that have taught me things for sure. And then, you know, micro credentialing opportunities there. There's a reason why Coursera and Udemy and all these other organizations um, are are growing so quickly. Uh, it's because they offer learning opportunities in bite sized chunks mm -hmm. and you know, you don't need to commit tons of money or tons of time in order to get a really good grounding in um, a new concept or, or something that you need to learn for work. Yeah, those bite-sized modules that you can do online, those little courses, I mean, we kind of jumped off this conversation talking about cost, but learning development also takes time, at least historically. Yeah. So the idea that an employee can jump into something that maybe takes a day or a week and they learn a new skill or they gain a certification. I mean, that's that's so powerful, right? Yeah. And I mean, think about it as a species, like we're kind of an apprenticeship species. We learn from watching other people in society and, you know, figuring out how to do things. I think technology has made it more and more possible to learn from a much wider set of individuals than, than we have before. And it's one of the reasons why media is so powerful. And I love the fact that you've got options like Masterclass now, yeah. where you can kind of hear from people who are really well known in their fields um, how they did X and there's a ton of podcasts obviously that also offer that same that same benefit yeah and think about all the knowledge you already have internally as an organization but maybe it's siloed in one person yeah if we're talking about affordable ways to, to really facilitate learning and development you got to learn which skills your employees have now and be able to democratize it right be able to share it so Things like lunch and learns, you get people together one day and they you give a presentation, you learn a new skill. But beyond that, taking those course materials, throw it in your learning management system, throw it, uh, send it to the entire organization through email. Um, so they have this resource that they can come back to again and again, uh, where typically you might think of as a one-off thing we just did for lunch one day. No, I think that's a really important point, and especially in this world of hybrid working and, you know, geographically distributed teams, having a central repository that people can go back to and that's fairly well indexed so, so that you can find the stuff mm -hmm. um, is pretty important uh, and really uh, helps make what, as you say, might otherwise be just like a moment in time um, one-time opportunity into a learning moment that can exist for decades, right? And potentially mm -hmm. help um, onboard new people and, um, you know, be ways, it, you can celebrate the, the information that you've got in your own employee base um, by kind of making them the internal expert at XYZ and making sure everybody else really is seeing and appreciating what they're bringing to the table. I think that's also another really great way to um, engage uh, the employee base and, and have kind of a thriving culture where people are excited to learn from each other. Yeah, and in, in light of the, the great resignation that we're all we're talking about, employees quitting left and right, how many times have you had that one employee, they're the only one that knows how to use that one tool, or they're the only one that knows that certain process, they leave the company, and then no one knows what to do. So the more you can record knowledge, the more you can archive knowledge, the more you can share knowledge, the more you're going to future-proof yourself when something like that happens. I, I think it's so important. I agree. And, you know, one of the things you talked about uh, with me a little while ago was how important it is to do a skills gap analysis um, in your organization, just so you can really make sure that you've got your bases covered and you're really proactively thinking about what skills you need people to be developing and what skills and, and you know, kind of information you need to make sure is uh, available and not locked up in one person's head. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I, I thought that was so interesting when we first talked about it. Yeah. So, and we're talking about how to make learning and development more affordable, right? I think any small or mid-sized business can do a skills gap analysis. All you need is a spreadsheet, okay? You have your managers sit down with their employees. What are the skills that are important to our organization? And how would you rate your employees on those skills? It could be a scale of one to five, poor to excellent, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, what you want to get is, okay, here's the skills that we need in our organization to succeed. And here are the skills that our employees don't have. So when you find that overlap, you know, you, 
you're a small business. You can't build every skill at once with all of your employees. Um, you're going to have to pick and choose, right? Doing something like a skills gap analysis says, hey, here are the few skills that we should really hone on because it's a weakness for us, but it's also really important for us. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I, what, the thing I love about that exercise is obviously it's applicable to individual teams and individual employees, but it's also really interesting to think about doing that same skills gap analysis, thinking about not just the organization as it exists now, but the organization as it will exist in three years. You know, if you're a fast growing small business, there will be things that you probably need to be able to do in a little while that you probably don't necessarily know how to do now. And so, uh, again, just kind of getting ahead of um, getting ahead of it by being able to at least think about that question and maybe start identifying, um, you know, where the folks who are already really competent and might have the space and bandwidth to learn new new things um, can lean in. I think that also makes helps to make sure that your high flyers uh, always have something to chew on. Yeah, I, I think that's such a great point. Um, we, we, we talked about cost, but another huge barrier that when it comes to small and mid-sized businesses and learning and development uh, is burnout. Um, it's something we've been discussing for the past two years at this point. Um, in our own research, we've found that more than three out of every four small business employees who transitioned to working from home during the pandemic are experiencing burnouts. Um, so when you have these employees that are already overburdened, already stretched thin, what are some strategies that can encourage overwhelmed workers to put more effort into their own development? Yeah, well, I think the first thing is sleep is really important, right? So let's take, yes. let's take sleep, one kind sleep. of a diet, um, exercise, right? So taking care of the of the basics of your you know physical being, so that you have a little bit of space and can get away from the exhaustion of you know fight or flight that's so easy to kind of get into when you're tired. Um, if that's taken care of, I think the next thing you really can be helpful to do is to get into the why and like help connect, help people articulate what is it about the work that they do that's meaningful to them? Um, why, why does it matter for them to be great at what they do? And where, what are their aspirations? Where do, where do they want to go next? And I think if you can connect um, the needs of the business with the aspirations and intrinsic motivators for individuals, um, that's a really, intoxicating place um, and, and provides a lot of motivation to, to like dig in and, and invest in, in building new skills because instead of feeling exhausting and draining, it's um, really kind of a means to an end, not an end in itself. And so uh, it, it, can, it can be very um, exhilarating in fact mm -hmm. and, and energy providing in, if you're working on something that you care about. Yeah, and undoubtedly, like you mentioned, there is going to be an overlap between the skills your organization needs and the skills that workers are interested in and they're passionate about. And that is what's going to fuel that intrinsic motivation, um, especially for employees who may be burdened with burnout right now. Um, yeah, we, we, you know, we, oh, go oh. Ahead. I was going to say, you know, one of the things I think that's been just a wonderful experience from my perspective is, is seeing how people, um, you know, we did a hackathon in the middle of the pandemic last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people were burnt out, et cetera, et cetera, compared to non-pandemic years. Mm -hmm. You know, we had fewer total numbers of people participating. But for the, you know, meaningful size chunk of people who did participate, um, they were super energized mm -hmm. by taking the time out and working on something that was special to them. Um, and, you know, we came up with a lot of great ideas for the business. People were really loving being able to connect with other colleagues that they clearly haven't seen in person mm -hmm. for a while yeah. um, or necessarily even work with every day. And, and I think that, um, Again, you know, making sure your culture has a space for learning and a space for trying things out uh, is really important. So I know that you know, in in a business like Captera, which is all about helping people find technology, it's a tech business in and of itself. It's a digital product. Mm -hmm. um, that type of uh, white collar hackathon is an easy thing to do if you're a field service organization or um, you know, in construction that may not be quite as relevant, but I do think there are analogs. Um, there are things that are really important to excellence and success in, in that particular role or that particular industry. And if you can find ways to 
give people space to be great at it and sort of share that awesomeness with their colleagues, um, you get that social proof, you get the connection, you get the intrinsic motivation um, that all leads to, again, less burnout, more, more energizing. That's such a good point. I mean, bringing people together is so important right now, not only for organizations getting to where they need to go, but in terms of bringing skills together, bringing knowledge together, coming up with ideas. I think that's that's a great point. Um, well, Claire, we're, we're out of time today. Thank you so much for coming and tuning in today. Thank you for having me, Brian. Thank you all for tuning into our podcast today. Visit capterra.com, the leading online resource for business software buyers, where you can read verified reviews, learn how to make the most of your technology, and get the insights your business needs to thrive. Subscribe to the Thrive Podcast on your favorite platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Explore other ways to drive success for your business, and we'll see you next time.